The waters still sparkle here on the Tana, Kenya's longest river. It's a thousand kilometers long and provides the basis of life for animals and humans alike. But some spots along the Tana have dried up, leaving just rocks and sand. The operator of a hydroelectric power plant has diverted several kilometers of the river to a nearby dam through an underground tunnel. Mariana Pius walks two hours every day to fetch drinking water for herself and her family of ten. She is outraged. Water used to flow along here, but then the first dam was built and it was reduced to a trickle. And after the second dam was built, it disappeared altogether. It's 33 degrees Celsius in the shade. Only the water provides relief from the heat. The locals cool off, wash and get their drinking water here, all in the one place. The water is almost lukewarm, providing perfect conditions for waterborne pathogens to thrive. We have stomach problems. At the hospital, they told me it was caused by amoeba and other side effects from the water. But I don't have any alternative because there's no other water around, so we have to use what's here. Lydia Olaka is here for the first time. The scientist works for the University of Nairobi's Wise Up project. The goal of the project is to diffuse the conflict between the different groups who use the water. Her data is meant to help find sensible ways of using the little water available. Water is life. There are two issues of just the quantity of water, so either a lot or too little, and then the other thing is the quality issues, that we have either water that is of very poor quality and water that is of good quality. So these are the two extremes within Kenya, it just depends on where you are. And where there is no water, conflicts are escalating. In recent years, further down the river, fights over grazing land and water have even resulted in death. Some residents believe climate change is the main culprit. Others blame the dams. Nearly half of Kenya's electricity is produced here, making the dams crucial for the country's industrial development. The power company has little interest in cooperating with the research project, but that's not deterring the scientists. The electricity company is very important because one of the component of WISAP is actually looking at the built infrastructure and looking at the effect of the dams on the river. And this is one of the big components because it really, their decisions will affect the natural uh, flow of the river and everything. All data is to be analysed by 2016, but so far progress on the project has been sluggish. Redundant structures, bureaucracy and hierarchies are just some of the issues hindering communication between project partners. And each partner has his own interests. So really, WISAP is important in trying to look at all the water demands within the catchment and really the distribution to have uh, the environmental needs, the needs of the people and also the development of the country. Managing the Tana River is complex, just like its ecosystem. To understand the river, Olaka travels to one of its tributaries. The interests of the locals here are different from what she's seen before. The people don't want to use the river for industrial purposes, but to preserve nature. This, is okay. this one? So this is the... One. So this is one of the best. This is one of the best. It gives a shade, a big shade, to cover the, the, the river. It also gives uh, no, no soil erosion because okay. of the roots. Okay. Yeah, it protects the erosion. Yeah. Over the past few years, they've been planting forests along the river. It's a long-term project supported by the government. Shade from the trees should help prevent evaporation of the river water. Five, ten years to, from now, 
this river had completely dried. Completely, there was no flow at all. But you can see the water is now flowing. We are proud of that because as leaders, we can see what we have done. And also people are appreciating us. So we are very much proud. The locals share their knowledge and experience with the scientists. They're glad to talk about the project because the forestation benefits everyone along the river. This is the dream. <laughs> to have it clean, clear, like what we have seen here. And if you compare this to what we're seeing downstream, you actually see that it collects a ton of things as it goes down. So we hope that all the stakeholders who are involved in this process can really see the, F, the benefits of reclaiming a river and this will produce clean water. That's something Mariana Pios can only dream about. The dry season has just started. She doesn't benefit from the hydroelectric power plant. She doesn't have electricity. She doesn't care about that. She just wants clean water to get through the day.